Ribosomes are the machinery of the cell that are responsible for translating and synthesizing our polypeptides, our proteins, and the way that they synthesize our proteins is by using the genetic code to translate the sequence of nucleotides into the sequence of amino acids and we synthesize the polypeptides in that fashion. Now, our polypeptides, once they're actually synthesized in the ribosome, are not complete. Before they actually arrive at the target location and before they're activated, they have to undergo many different types of processes, many different types of modifications. And together, all these modifications are known as post-translational modifications of our polypeptide chains. Now, uh, the types of post-translational modifications that we're going to briefly discuss in this lecture are shown on the board. So we have phosphorylation, methylation, glycosylation, we have proteolysis, we have N-acetylation, as well as lipidation. So let's begin with the process of phosphorylation. So phosphorylation is the addition of a phosphate group onto certain amino acids, usually the serine, threonine and our tyrosine on our polypeptide chain and the enzyme that basically catalyzes the addition of the phosphate group is known as protein kinases. So by adding our phosphate group onto our polypeptide chain, we're basically increasing the hydrophilic character of that protein. And as we'll see in a future lecture, the this type of modification is usually used in the process of the cell cycle, in the cell growth process, as well as signal transduction. Now, the second type of post-translational modification is methylation, and methylation is basically the addition of a methyl group onto certain amino acids via the enzyme known as methyltransferase. So methylation usually increases the hydrophobic character of the enzyme, and so those polypeptides that are methylated basically increase their hydrophobic character as well. Well. Now, methylation is utilized in a process known as epigenetic regulation, which is basically the regulation of gene expression that takes place during the process of transcription. Now, let's move on to the third type of post-translational modification known as glycosylation. So, glycosylation is the process by which we add a sugar component onto our polypeptide chain. Now, by adding a sugar component, we basically affect the protein's folding process as well as change the conformation of that protein. Now, one example of protein proteins that are glycosylated are those proteins that ultimately end up on the plasma membrane of the cell. And these proteins usually act as receptors for other important biological molecules such as, for example, neurotransmitters. Now, let's move on to the fourth type of post-translational uh, modification process known as proteolysis. So, proteolysis is basically the process by which certain types of enzymes known as proteases actually cut our proteins. Now, why would we want to cut a protein? Well, basically, certain proteins are synthesized in their inactive or zymogen form. And in order to actually activate those proteins, our enzymes called proteases must break certain peptide bonds in those proteins. Now, many of the digestive enzymes in the stomach as well as, as, well as in the small intestine undergo this process of proteolysis. Now, let's move on to the fifth type of post-translational modification known as N-acetylation. So, N-acetylation is the transfer of an acetyl group from one molecule to an amino acid or onto the polypeptide chain. Now, this process not only takes place after our translation took place, but it also actually takes place during the process of translation translation. 
So in most eukaryotic cells, when translation is still actually taking place, the first amino acid in the growing polypeptide chain, usually our methionine amino acid, is removed and replaced by our acetyl group. And this process is known as N-acetylation. Now, N-acetylation plays a crucial role in gene expression histones, those proteins that that are involved in condensing our DNA into chromatids can be meth or can be acet uh, acetylated, which reduces their ability to fold and opens up our DNA so that that DNA section can undergo the transcriptional process. Now, finally, the final process that we're going to discuss is lipidation. So, lipidation is the process by which we add a lipid component onto our polypeptide chain. Now, why would we want to add a lipid component onto a polypeptide chain? Well, basically those proteins that ultimately end up in a membrane, for example, the mitochondrial membrane, the endoplasmic reticulum membrane, or the, or the plasma membrane, these proteins that end up on a membrane need to actually incorporate themselves into those membranes. And because lipids consist, or because membranes consist consist of lipids by adding a lipid component onto our protein, we're increasing that protein's affinity to the membrane. So this process is known as lipidation. So we saw that phosphorylation, methylation, glycosylation, proteolysis, and acetylation and lipidation are six different processes that are known as post-translational modification. So these are the ways by which our polypeptides are modified following the process of translation. Now there are actually even more processes than we discussed in this lecture and we'll discuss those in more detail when we get into biochemistry. Now another type of process that takes place following our, uh, following our translation is the folding of the protein. So in order for the polypeptide to actually become active, it actually has to fold into the proper three-dimensional form. And special types of proteins known as chaperones actually assist in this folding process.